This is Twit. All right. So um, now we are going to speak. What? All right. What? Well, we actually got Spider-Man chiming in here. All right. A, f- a few weeks ago, I actually reviewed the Ultimate Lightning McQueen by Sphero, um, and. And this uh, Lightning McQueen, I actually turned off the app for this one, so he wouldn't be talking as Spider-Man is right now. Yeah, really. <laughs> but it basically like moves animatronically. We can show a little bit of uh, of my review of that. But it's it's an amazing toy, and it really makes Lightning McQueen feel like he is alive. That like is he's straight really out of the movie. cool, man. Yeah, that is really cool. I mean, it, it captures the f- the feel, the look of Lightning McQueen. Yeah, it's like he jumped right out of the screen. Now. Yeah. Uh, Sphero, the company behind this, uh, they've been making tech-infused toys for, you know, maybe more than five years now. Mm-hmm. Their namesake ball, it's like this little rolling ball you could control with your phone, that's where they started, and they've been continually updating their apps with more and more games to play, uh, more cool features, and uh, opening it up to coding as well. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So open source kind of thing? Uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's open source, but we'll actually be able to ask Ryan Burnett, a product Let's manager do. for Sphero, that question. Hey, Ryan. Hey, guys. How's it going? Pretty good. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it here. So you got a lot of good stuff going. Um, This Spider-Man toy is the newest Sphero product. Um, And as as we heard here, I'll turn his volume back up. You can turn his volume down in in the app. Um, But this this is unlike any Spider-Man toy that I've seen before uh, because of because of what you guys have done in infusing him with so many different features here. Um, In fact, you can tell me a joke. Go after committing a crime. I'm not sure. Where'd he go, Spider Man? Prism. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you can you can he tells a lot of dad jokes. I, I think that's pretty great. Um, and then there are also voice controls for uh, little imaginary stories where he's telling you about fighting supervillains and all kinds of cool stuff. Wow. Um, let's talk about this. W- where did the idea for Sphero getting into this come from? Sure. I mean, basically. We're trying to build the toys that we wish we had when we were kids. Um, There's a lot of technology that's available to us today that, you know, you know, at a price that we can, you know, start utilizing it in these toys. And we're really just, you know, we're we're dreaming up the this, you know, the Spider-Man action figure that we wish we had or we pretended that we had when we were kids. So um, it's really the way that I think about it is it's an action figure that that comes to life in a lot of different ways. Um, with the built-in accelerometer, the content, the embedded speech recognition, the eyes, we just we're just really trying to bring characters to life, and that's kind of been the heart of of this project in particular. And you know, we're we've been excited to see it develop over the last 16 months, and really stoked to get it out into the wild and see what people think about it. So now I'm kind of curious, uh, how much, if any, artificial intelligence is built into this? Sure. Um, I like to think of it as just intelligence because <laughs> <laughs> good point. We're building, um, we're building smart, connected devices, and with Spider-Man in particular, I've had you know that that's been kind of uh, the project that I've been super invested in in the last year and a half. And we've done you know everything we can to build in things like you know he he remembers um, where you left off. He remembers. Uh, answers to questions that he's asked you, you know, months before. He knows what time it is. He knows what day it is. He knows what month it is. Um, if you ask him how's school and it's June, he'll be like, what are you talking about? It's just, and I'm not in summer school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've really, you know, we're, we've really tried to tr- try to build a lot of stuff in there where it, it truly is smart and it truly is intelligent. And so um, I'd say there's, there's quite a lot. And the way that we build the architecture of the system really leaves it open and dynamic so we can um we can tweak it and we can change it and we can uh you know build upon it as the product kind of evolves and i i really think that that's what makes it special is when you unbox this thing and start playing with it that's really the beginning of a of a relationship and and we're really looking forward to seeing that develop so you know we're we're kind of living at like maybe the beginning of really bringing AI into our lives. We have voice controlled speakers. We're talking to our phones and our laptops. And now you come with a voice controlled Spider Man. But with all of these options, there are concerns over data and privacy for adults who are knowingly making these decisions to interact with these technologies, right? What are you all doing here on Spider Man 
to protect kids and and any sort of interactions they have with with your device absolutely um you know and as a parent i share that exact concern and so um you know it's really close to our to our heart and one of our you know major focuses is safety and security and in the case of spider-man we really kind of built the architecture of the uh, technology around safety so for example when you uh, when you first set up your your toy he's gonna you're gonna set up an alias you're gonna come up with your own superhero name your own superhero power so yeah i chose danger I dude and bionic fists for my <laughs> <Sure. Yeah, laughs> sorry so, to cut you so off we're, yeah. oh no <laughs> so we're not storing any personally identifiable information ever we're not sending any personally identifiable information so we really start out with kind of this anonymized uh user who you know you're creating your own uh, superhero so that you can kind of be on the same page with Spidey and interact with them. Um, the other big thing that we did was we, we do all of our speech recognition locally on the device. So when you pick it up, you can feel there's a little bit of weight to it. Oh, yeah. That's because it, feel, it feels hefty app. and durable. Let me see. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's, you're right. There's like a full, full blown computer inside of him. So we do <laughs> all of our speech rec locally. We don't send that up to the cloud, you know, like, um, a Siri or Amazon Echo or Google Home, that all happens on device. And that actually, not only does that help with uh, reassuring parents that this is a safe toy, that there's no information being sent and received to the cloud, but it also allows kids to take it on things like road trips, like what I'm about to do for Father's Day weekend here. So you'll be able to take Spidey out of a Wi-Fi area and have mm. the full out experience interacting with him. And, yeah, so, and I've you know, noticed to use the toy, you don't need to have the app or the phone with you. I actually left him in, in my office uh, for a while <laughs> with, with my colleagues, and he was <coughs> chatting it up. So uh, he can work independently. You don't always have to give your kid your phone while giving him this toy. Absolutely. Um, we, we really you know, made an effort to make sure that you, you can, everything that you can do through the phone, you can do through voice. And in fact, there's more interactions you can do through voice. So the phone is really kind of... Uh, in my opinion, we're, we're sort of giving you a, a way in, a way into this conversation and a way into this relationship that you're starting with Spider-Man. And from there, uh, as you kind of learn to interact and feel more comfortable talking to a, uh, a Spider-Man, then more stuff becomes unlocked mm -hmm. and he'll kind of lead you on into other types of interactions you can have that aren't super apparent in the app. So this specific Spider-Man, um, there's um, a mic, there's a speaker, obviously you said, all the all the data processing is done locally, not being sent to the cloud. Is there a camera in here or not? Because I I know there's the 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 guard mode where he can actually s watch a room, and if someone comes in, he'll say, "Hey, you're not supposed to be here." And then when you come back, you say, "Stand down." He'll say, "Oh, two people stopped by. I wasn't sure if I got them or not. You might want to do sweeps, cool stuff like that." <laughs> yeah, totally. So there there's no camera. What we use is a uh, an IR sensor that's built into the button here. It's just like a standard motion detector that you someone would have in their house so there's there's no camera it's basically like the infrared sensor technology that you have in like a standard tv remote so all it senses is was there a change in movement mm -hmm. and so that's how that's kind of the technology behind his what we call a spider sense so is is the toy connected to the internet at all so when you first set them up you you go through a setup process where you give Spidey your Wi-Fi password, your home Wi-Fi password, just as if you know a guest comes over to your house and asks to connect your Wi-Fi. Once he gets that Wi-Fi password, he pings our server, and we basically update the firmware, we update the software, and we update the content. So as long as he is still um, connected to that network, at uh, you know at late late at night when you know after midnight, if he still has an internet connection he'll actually ping our server and say hey is there new content if there is he'll silently download it you won't even know it happened and then the next morning he'll actually have new content on him I guess and that's getting, really oh go ahead i was just going to say getting back to the security issue for a minute uh it seemed i i was wondering about you know somebody hacking it <laughs> to be able to do something nefarious sure so that um everything that we uh i mean basically it'd be totally secure because there's no interface in which someone could ever do that, mm. basically. So with these toys, one of the things, and well, really with all Spheral products, you're always making a commitment to having new content, to kind of updating stuff. 
And I feel like that's important to point out because the prices here are pretty high. I mean, 150 bucks. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong for for Spider-Man. It was 300 for Lightning McQueen. Mm. But with the previous Sphero Ball, the, the kind of the the namesake and the the logo of the company, you guys have had that around for like five years or something. Really, that long? Yeah, right. Is, am, I, am I wrong, Ryan? No, that sounds about right. Yeah. And, and you guys have consistently had app updates, new games to play, new capabilities, and you've opened it up to coding so that kids, whether they're on their own or they're at school, <coughs> they could download apps and actually control this. And, and you all recently um, uh, uh, got working with some, some Apple software too, right? Can you tell me a little bit more about that initiative? Um, sure. I can't go too deep into that. I don't, I'm not super hands-on with the, uh, the Spark end of that, but that's basically our EDU uh, department, and they are heavily invested in education and teaching kids coding, getting involved in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what they have is a is an app that really lets kids, you know, get their feet wet with coding, understand what it is and, you know, kind of empowers them to control their own robots and build their own programs. Do you uh, think we could ever see Spider-Man or Lightning McQueen opened up to the education initiatives you guys have going on? I think that's a possibility. Uh, I, we don't have any plans in the direct future that I'm aware of for either the either of those products, but it's definitely a you know a core belief that's a big part of you know Sphero's DNA is that um, that EDU and that open um, approach. And so uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we had you know more products in the future that go in that direction. All right, so with all of these toys, part of the promise and in part of justifying the prices being a little mm. bit higher than an average Spider-Man action figure or something, yeah. is that these toys will get better over time. <clears throat> um, where do you see this going, not only for Sphero, but kind of toys in general? Do you see it ever getting to a point where our toys are just kind of acting in front of us and we don't even have to touch them to play with them? <laughs> or like, where, do, where does this end and it just stops becoming like a full end? robot, right? <laughs> Sure. I mean, there's a lot in that question there. Um, I, I think for, for example, for Spider-Man, um, we're, we're trying to build products that people don't throw away after a week. Uh, we're trying to build products that people really develop um, an affinity for and a relationship with that, like you said, over time and, you know, maybe two years from now, someone that bought a Spider-Man today might wake up in the morning and have an entirely new type of experience available to them, uh, you know, at no cost at all. So really trying to pack value and pack fun and pack longevity into these products um, so that we're not just selling plastic by the pound. Um, mm -hmm. a, a, lot of the, a lot of the toys that, that you see today, you know, they're, real, they're like firecrackers. You, you light them off, they explode, and it's over. Mm -hmm. um, or we're trying to build something that's a little bit more long lasting, a little bit more meaningful. And then also just get into, um, you know, how, how to interact the world, interact with the world. And certainly, you know, we, we've never had the idea to build toys that just play, you know, play on their own. And you sit there and watch. A lot of this is about participating. Right. And it's about getting your experience off the screen and into the real world. And I think that our products really um, the 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 thing that makes them special, I think, is we are trying to inspire people and and inspire imagination in the kids that play with them. I think that's beautiful. That yeah, you know, get to get kids in particular away from the screen. I mean, you've got an app, okay. Yeah, yeah. But still, you can play with this without the app. One of my questions was, how durable is it? I mean, we're talking about kids here, right? They're going <laughs> to bang it around. Yeah, sure. So so we definitely built it to be as durable as we possibly could. Um, we've, we've done a lot of testing with it. We've, you know, a, a lot of the games are actually very, very active where you have to move and jump around or you can even, there's a feature where you can toss them and you make sounds. Um, so, <laughs> we, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's fairly subjective, but I mean, pretty darn durable. When you pick it up, you can feel it, it's heavy. And, uh, oh yeah, and so yes. a nice rubberized uh, uh, coating here. Mm -hmm. You know, I beat I beat up your Lightning McQueen. I've been been using this thing, and the front bumper's got a little bit of scuff, but not much. It almost looks <laughs> new, and I've literally been driving it into walls on purpose to see how durable it is. Oh, that's great. These are some. You guys make some <laughs> of the most durable toys, it seems. Awesome. Um, now, we'll ask you a, a, one last question here before we let you go. Really appreciate you giving us so much time, but Disney is an investor of Sphero, and we see here two Disney-inspired toys. You're still making your own products that 
come outside of the you know Disney creative space, but what's the future of Serial look like? Are you guys going to be making more Avengers type stuff, some Star Wars stuff, or are you really going to be kind of going back and having a balance of you know original Sphero ideas and some Disney ideas? Sure, uh, great question. Um, you know, honestly, this is the funnest place in the world to work. The types of ideas and the types of products that I see around here every day are just mind blowing. Um, I think at any given time, you could probably guesstimate there's maybe 50 possible products being prototyped and played with and tested. And so, you know, Disney, uh, as great of a partner as they are, they're really the sky's the limit with with what we can do and what we can build here. And I think that we we're investigating, you know, a diversified product portfolio with uh, different partners, different licenses, and then of course all of our own IP um, that we're going to develop. So I think over the next you know, two to three years, we're going to start seeing a lot of really fun stuff coming out of Sphero. Oh, man, I'm really looking forward to that. Ryan, thank you so much for giving, you, uh, giving us your time. If people want to pick these up, where can they get them? You know, the best place to go is just Sphero.com.